good to go. Hey guys, thanks very much for coming along today. Um, I'm going to give you a talk on body language and its effect on communication. Um, so today um, we'll, we'll have, um, it's only a 30 minute talk, so we're going to break it up to three different areas. There'll be a practical and interactive part where I'll be using you guys, all right? Um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, review that then in a discussion afterwards. So it'll, it'll be kind of like um, a situation um, where um, I'll get three people. Um, so we go one, two, three, all right? You're gonna be out of the room, all right? And you three are gonna be in, in the room. You'll need to join up here as well, all right? Or maybe, maybe we might, might, we might put you down there, we might leave you there. Um, so all you're going to talk about is for two minutes on your sport. And then I'll, I'll brief you outside, okay? Uh, then we'll do a little bit of a, a discussion afterwards uh, about the, the scenarios that, that presented themselves. And then I'll, I'll uh, go into a, a little piece on how to read others and maybe um, elicit from you some um, situations that you've been in and how body language has affected you. So before we get into that, this is me. I'm actually a little bit lighter than, than, than I was in that photograph, thank God. I'm a swim coach since 1986. Dad of two boys, that's Luke on the left. I've done a really good job with him. He's 11 years old and I've kept him out of prison. Um, he is a demon. And then it's Jack, who, if you can see, I'm actually taller than him there. He's now six foot, okay? And that's literally a year ago. Um, I'm partially deaf, I'm also colorblind, and as I say, I'm overweight, <laughs> uh, so I'm a member of Slimming World, and have, have been uh, trashing through, trying, trying to, I've lost three stones since uh, last April. I used to be um, a triathlete, went to two world championships and did silly things like that, uh, but that's a, a lifetime ago. The longer it goes on, it kind of keeps on going, it is really, really a long time ago. Um, so just a little bit of a, um, a reason why body language is important. So I, I found it, this um, paper, or actually it was a book by uh, Edward Lewis from 2012. A command over body language has become an important skill in today, in, in, in today, oh, I've written that wrongly, oops. Uh, in today, um, it's the X factor that completes the personalities of executive entertainers, politicians, and in our case, coaches. All right, so we're going to divide you up. Hopefully we're not going to create a situation like this guy had to face. All right, can anyone remember his, the quote? I will find you or I will... Uh, yeah, what's the bit before that? If he has what? A certain set of skills, okay? Okay, so we're going to develop those skills. So one, two, three, we'll go outside. So, just a bit this one there. Okay, so, um, crossed arms, really disinterested here, yeah. okay? Um, you're deaf or hard of hearing, all right? Um, and Tom, yeah. you've got to interrupt all the time, be super okay. enthusiastic. I'm going to do that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's only going to be a two minute talk, all right? You're on. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants that to find out about these guys?
wheel for the coach. Senior ladies, I have the national senior team. Hi folks, so my sport is hockey. Sorry, what's that? Hockey, sorry. Have you ever heard of hockey? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, no, 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 just field hockey on the grass. It's on a sort of artificial 3G pitch. Um, and I don't know, anyone ever seen it before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want this to go over your heads. It's, it's, it's a game where you have to use a stick. And it's only got one, there's one flat side. That's pretty, pretty hard sport. Very complex sort of sport. It's a bit like, I suppose, golf, except you're actually having to move a bit. There's golf you have to run. It's, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. But it's, it's, it's hot. What I'm saying is, it's, it's a fast sport. Yeah. And it's, it's a really, really tough sort of sport. You've got a flat stick and you have to try and score into a very small net. And you can only score from one sort of area. It's the two nets. Could be two nets if you want to score no goal, but it's one net that you're trying to score into. Um, you can only use the right side of the stick. You have to use the flat side of the stick. And pretty much like football, I guess, same sort of rules, 11 a side. Um, Okay guys, so we if you hadn't figured out, alright, we had 
first person. What, what was the first person doing? Gary, what was he doing? Yeah. Okay. Did you, as, as a deaf person, did you find it hard to? Yeah, I didn't hear anything there. Okay, why? Why well, you couldn't look at me ever? Right, it's facing the other way. Okay, any of you guys suss out what Wayne was doing? I see that he didn't know the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, Wayne was disinterested. He had his arms folded. Okay, and he's he was actually having a great laugh. <laughs> okay, so we had first coach come in if they were not facing the group. What about the second coach? Uh, sat down. Yeah. Um, no, no body language. Minimal body language. Just verbal communication. Yeah. Did it seem like she was interested? No. No. Okay, so it's very much just going to sit here. Okay, and, and just, yeah. And what about our, our third coach? The, the hockey stroke golf uh, <laughs> coach. Talking so down. Yeah. Talking down. So, very good. Well done, guys. They, they, they picked up exactly what, what I asked you to do. Now, okay, so Wayne wasn't paying attention. We had a deaf guy. What about Tom? <laughs> Interrupting. All right. So, um, so at times there, what, what, what would that? If, if we were to come up with those sort of either individuals or presenters within our club situation, how how could we deal with them, or how should we deal with them? How or have you had to deal with that kind of thing before? Probably in a group of former sort of. Probably obsessed with questions, you know, but sort of answering, maybe think about it and give them a decent answer. Or if there's not any junk, you're, you're sort of assessing what sort of characterise what you're telling us. And any questions should sure, go to meet afterwards. Yeah, good. So he was hogging the time, wasn't he? he yes. Was, everything was directed towards him. All the energy was going towards him. And if we're in an environment where, like, most of you guys are team sports, except for our golfer and myself, you know, and, you know. It's especially in, 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 in an environment where you have a squad of, of 12, 15, 20, whatever. Um, it can, if one person is hogging the limelight, you're not going to be an effective communicator. Okay? Um, what about the disinterested person? We didn't, none, none, of us, none, none of us twigged that. I know you were facing the, the, the other way, mm -hmm. but we didn't, we didn't twig that. Okay? So it's being able to read his body language. Sorry, Tom, just a few points. <coughs> sorry, uh, Robert, Martin, sorry. Maybe Tom's holding the line, right, you see, so you don't really notice. Exactly. But yeah, he's exactly. interested. Now, the, the kind of banger in the room <laughs> well, was the deaf person. It's very hard to go into a room with a deaf person. Now, I'm partially deaf, and I would very much mostly sit towards the front, part, partially because of that, I want to read lips. Um, um, plus, and also, then I get embarrassed if I fall asleep. <laughs> so, uh, but I know of one particular swimming coach who's the same age as me and has gone to all the CPDs in the world and understands nothing. Yeah, I actually have a player on my boys team at the moment who's who's mostly deaf. Yeah. So like it's so sometimes you forget like it's easy to forget in when you have a big group and like there's times where you might be speaking too fast or you might turn around for a second and so it's actually. You know, you do have to constantly be thinking about Absolutely, that. yeah. But it, and it's hard then if someone is deaf and you, you're coming in cold then. So it's also important to um, spread the love, not give it all to Tom. You know, that, that you're looking at the person. Because if you're looking at the person then, um, at least then they're able to read A, your body language, and B, your lips. Okay? Um, the other thing that sure you may, may have found it. Um, the accents is another thing, you know. Um, I know when I come up here, um, there's one particular coach and he's from, I believe he's from the countryside. I cannot understand a word he says. Okay, uh, it's just because he has a thick country accent. I always thought Northern Ireland people had the same accents, mm -hmm. but I've now, I'm now starting to recognize Belfast <laughs> and definitely uh, countryside. Okay, 
So we we're gonna take them on, and now we're gonna try and learn because part of it as well is not only for us as delivering, but us as who we deliver to, and how we have to read. So it's a two-way process, the, the, the body language piece. Because if Wayne is disinterested and is kind of, is kind of closed, and that, that's what that is, 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 is protecting himself, um, we have to find a way of actually making him more relaxed and being part of it. So we're gonna, gonna see if you can actually uh, recognize some of that. I've, I've, I've uh, sorry, I'm running black and white pictures now, as I say. But would, would that get Wayne interested? He's looking for a fight, is it? You think he's looking for a fight? Okay, why, why do you think that? Clench fist. Clench fist, what else? Angry face, wide stance. Wide stance, he's upright, he's slightly leaning forward, all right? And straight up, and it's very aggressive, isn't it? Okay, and how often have we come across either players who were maybe correcting, who will stand like that? They'll get very defensive and aggressive coming back to you, okay? And how you deal with that situation? Or we're dealing, or you as a coach, really annoyed with someone, and have you ever stood like that? Or you're actually really frustrated. What about that? He's also standing upright. Does he look better because he has a suit on? Okay, he's straddling his, 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 uh, his hips, his hands on his hips. It's still fairly dominant, isn't it, and powerful? Okay, not just because it's a power suit. Okay? That's a bit better, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Alright, by the way, my, my, my thing isn't working on this. <laughs> I, I have all these timed, <laughs> you, you, you were supposed to guess them, but I don't know why, why it's not working. All right, so it's, it is an upright posture, but the arms are open. When, when you open your arms like that, does anybody know what that means? Well, you have to say welcome, maybe? Or? Welcome. Anyone else? It's comforting, maybe? That you're vulnerable. Open. You're opening open. yourself. You're making yourself vulnerable, okay? You're, you're opening to them. It, again, it's the opposite to protecting yourself. You're opening to by opening your palms, why why would that be be warm and friendly as well? So I'm sure you're not going to see it any time. Maybe. Exactly, goes back to hundreds of years ago, okay, where you you might have had something in your hand like a rock or something like that. You're you're showing everything, okay. And Wayne would probably find that a little bit easier to uh, to to deal with and talk to, and as well as that, the smile. Okay, the warm, friendly smile, okay, which doesn't cost us anything, but um, does, does, uh, does mean a hell of a lot. Okay, so the palms are open, but now they're down. When, when might we use that? So he's being really aggressive. Can't yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. Or what else? Have you ever, have you ever used it? Um, yeah, probably in a situation where things might be a little bit hectic and it's just to try and relax or slow down the tempo maybe. Exactly, yeah. Calm down, guys. Yeah. Calm down, slow down. <laughs> Not just for the basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. What about that one? It's an interesting one about that. Not really the answer. But That's called a lower steeple. Okay? And what that indicates is that you're actually you're, you're being listened to, okay? Um, so, you see, well, just you're, 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 you're if you problem. study politics, Angela Merkel does it. Yeah. A lot. What, what happens is, the, 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 the quote that, that I used at the start with politicians and things like that, yeah. they're actually taught this. Uh, they're actually told, this is how you actually stand. There's a lot of stuff online now about interviews and things like that, about how, um, you know, you have to put your hands together like that, because you're listening to what they're saying and then open up like that. And um, when you're sitting across the table from them, don't sit there with your arms folded and give, give the wrong attitude towards it. Um, 
But th this here is, you, you can also see, it's not just the hands. Look at the way his head is, is cocked. The ear is kind of cocked forward. All right, which helps for a deaf person. All right, but also um, it shows that, that they're interested in, and listening to what you're saying. I'm hoping you're not listening. All right, <laughs> which was you earlier <laughs> on. <laughs> a disinterested person, a person there that, oh God, you know, what's he saying? And what's she saying again? You know, they don't have to necessarily be curled up like that, but it's everything about it is, why are you saying this? Why are you doing this to me, you know? So, before we, um, before we uh, finish up, all right, um, I just want to be, us, us to be aware that in my situation, I coach in a swimming pool, all right, which is vastly different to a gym, a basketball hall, okay, in that if you shout, it's, I would imagine it's very, very loud, yeah, if you shout on the side of the pitch, it gets lost. I shout on the side of the pitch, it gets lost. I remember doing my, my level four coaches and um, part of it was, was that um, every two days you had um, like almost like a Viva Voce where, where it's a, an interactive thing and they give you recommendations at the end of, of it. Um, the senior tutor on it said, you know what, uh, one of the things that I have to be aware of is that um, I come across very aggressive what I didn't explain to him was that I'm partially deaf. So my, my level is actually higher than most. And what he actually did was he went and spoke to the kids that I was coaching. And they all thought, no, no, he's actually okay. He's having a great crack with us. And he was like, but I'm down the far end. It seems like he's very, very loud and very aggressive. Okay, so we have to, two different, lots of people can take it up in a different way. Not only are, I always say, we're in the entertainment business. Sport is in the entertainment business. Okay, we, and especially in Lisburn, okay, in, in the swimming pool, it's like a fishbowl. Okay, we we are, are on the deck. We're coaching to the kids, but we're also coaching to the parents on on, on the the bank as well. Okay, and so one of the other so di different different situations have different things. Top, do you say do you have indoor pitches at all? Yeah, I do coach out here. Coach football. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, you, you, you're, you're playing. Oh, you're playing on that. Teams adaptable. <laughs> All right. So, um, so again, it, it's it's like you'd be very much working one to one, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, different thing. Although it could be lash and rain and windy and things like that. So you might have to, but you're not going to be get the ball, like you know like 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 that. So it would be very much. You would have to have. A different kind of tone to a swimming coach or a basketball coach and um, who your thing would be very much they can hear you all the time if you're in a match you can be shouting all the time they, they'll probably hear you I have to whistle because we're faces in the water and they do hear me <laughs> all right the same down in rugby like you know like it, and you're able to shout from the from the sidelines and that but we have to learn to read others um, because there's no point in us saying one particular way. I could have six swimmers here. I actually have six different methods of communication because it's very much what will work for you won't work for you. What works for you, Tom, definitely won't work for you. you know? um, so one of the things I'm actually trying to bring in in Lisbon is actually to talk less find a way to get the message across by saying little, as little as possible. Because what I found was they were just going blah, 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 10 million things. And then I could see it from the kids across the pool, I could see it. They're totally switched off, okay? So we speak a little bit less and um, we actually can, can convey it in a, in a different way. Is there anything you guys want to ask about any of those particular things or no? Okay. No. Okay, good right. YouTube video when when you wrote about it, your body language will send you the link to it. We all need PowerPoint as well. And 
I, there was one that I was, I, again, I'm not very technically, I, I'll, I'll put my hands up. Well, this the, to read. No, I was going to put in a video, yeah. but I actually didn't know how to do it. Um, and that was, there was one, I think, master of body language. Can anyone think of that? Well, going by controversial here, Hitler? Not even better than Hitler, I think, anyway. You know, Trump, I, my own right? personal thing. No, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Bean only spoke a couple of times in, in, in his, I think he spoke in his movies, but never spoke in his TV. Yeah. But actually, in, in, a, in, a, in an era where speech was part of it, I know there was um, Charlie Chaplin and, and uh, Harold Bean and people like that, like, you know, um, who were brilliant, but they were in the silent era. But I think uh, I was trying to get him in, and, and the, the bit where he's, uh, he, he's actually in a restaurant and he gets a, a he just goes, goes off the flow and he gets like shrimp. And, Body language of what, what, what he actually conveys. Mm. Listen, guys, thanks a million. Appreciate that.